Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Network Cabling Part 2. Today we're going to be talking about coaxial cabling and fiber optic cabling. There's a fair amount of ground to cover, so let's go ahead and begin this session. And of course, we're going to begin by talking about coaxial cabling. Coaxial, or coax, cabling is one of the oldest Ethernet standards for network cabling. It was standardized in 1973. It's been used for baseband, carries just a single digital signal, and it has been used for broadband, carrying multiple digital signals. It is composed of a central conductor that is covered by an insulating layer, which is covered by an outer mesh or foil layer, which is then finished off with an outer insulating layer. That inner metal mesh layer helps to protect against electromagnetic interference, EMI. There are several different types of coax cable. There is RG58. It was used in 10 base 2 networking. It could span a maximum distance of 185 meters and had a 50 ohms impedance value. It's no longer commonly found in the modern network. Then there's RG59. It's commonly used to provide a broadband connection between two devices over a short distance. And it has a 75 ohms impedance value. And it's only used for short distances because it leaks its signal. It can't span very far. Then we have RG6, which is used for cable TV or broadband. Now the distance that RG6 can span varies, but it still has a 75 ohms impedance value. And it's commonly used to make the connection to a cable modem by the cable company. There are two basic types of coax cable connectors. There is the BNC, also known as the Bayonet Neil Councilman connector. You can also call it a bayonet connector. It is used with coax cabling, but is now considered obsolete. The connection from the cable to the device was achieved through a spring-loaded twist lock type of connector. A BNC coupler can also be used to connect two coax cable segments back to back. Much more common is the F connector. It's a threaded bayonet connector, and it's also used with coax cable. An F connector coupler can be used to connect two coax cable segments back to back. Now let's move on to fiber optic cabling. So now let me describe fiber optic cabling. First off, it's relatively expensive and harder to work with than with other types of network cabling. It's not as common as other types, either coax or twisted pair in the LAN environment but it can resist all forms of electromagnetic interference and it cannot be easily tapped into. That means it's harder for people to eavesdrop on your network transmissions. It also can cover long distances at high speed. Fiber optic cabling is designated by fiber type cladding size. By the way, the cladding is what the light bounces down and it's a jacket size, that outer jacket that covers the cable. The size of the cladding and the size of the jacket are listed in micrometers. Most applications of fiber optic cabling require that the cables be run in pairs. One cable to send transmissions, one cable to receive transmissions. The type of connector used on fiber optic cabling can impact the performance of the transmission. There are two basic categories of connectors. There is the UPC, the Ultra Physical Contact. This connector has a back reflection rating of around a negative 55 decibel loss. Then there's the APC, the Angled Physical Connector, which has a back reflection rating of around a negative 70 decibel loss, making it the better performing connector. Now let's talk about fiber types. There's multi-mode fiber, which uses an infrared LED system to transmit light down the fiber. It sends multiple rays of lights down the cable at the same time. It is used for shorter fiber runs, under two kilometers. 
it is less expensive than the other type of fiber cabling. Then we have single mode fiber, SMF. It uses a laser diode arrangement to transmit light down the fiber. It only sends a single ray of light down the cable. Even though my diagram depicts it as going straight, it still bounces down the cladding, but there's only one of them. It's used for longer runs that require high speed, and it can span more than 40 kilometers. So now let's talk about fiber optic cabling connectors. And first up is the SC. That is the subscriber connector or the square connector. You can also call it a standard connector. An easy way to remember it is stick and click. It's a push-pull type connector. Then we have the ST, the straight tip. You can also think of this as stick and twist. It is a spring-loaded twist lock type of connector. There is also the LC, which can be called the local connector or loosened connector or little connector. It's a type of connector that uses a locking tab to secure the connection. Similar to the LC is the MTRJ, the Mechanical Transfer Registered Jack. It's a small form factor connector that contains two fibers and that also utilizes a locking tab to secure the connection. You might also find a fiber optic coupler. Guess what it does? It's used to connect two fiber optic cables back to back. Now that concludes this session on network cabling part two. I talked about coaxial cabling and I concluded with fiber optic cabling. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I'm sure I'll do another one soon.